Hey guys, welcome back to Behind the Likes TV. I'm your host, Melissa Angelica, and on today's episode, we have a former chef, traveling photographer, and a social media influencer. And today, he's going to share his journey with us, Behind the Likes. Thank you for being with us, Christian. Thanks for having me, Melissa. So before I like to get started, um, I kind of want to pick your brain a little bit. Tell us, tell your audience, what it was like growing up for you. Wow, that's an interesting question because uh, growing up, I grew up as an only child and I grew up with a Mexican family. And I think you can uh, kind of relate that having a Mexican, uh, Mexican parents can kind of be tough just because they're coming from you know, from a different country into uh, the U.S. and they they basically want the best of us uh, because they weren't, for the most part, weren't able to have that for themselves. Yeah, have that for themselves. So, growing up, uh, my mom was obviously the the good cop in in the, in the family, but my dad was always bad cop, and for the most part, it was he was very very strict, and I, I can kind of say that I didn't have a, a regular childhood as a most people did. I didn't get to experience having uh, having to hang out with friends, going out with uh, going out with different type of people, and getting to socialize as much as I as I've seen when I was growing up through middle school and, and high school. I did most of my social uh, social uh, doing like through sports, uh, doing cross country and track, and um, and sometimes occasions occasionally like prom and, and homecoming. But because of that, I grew up being really shy. And because of my dad being very strict, I became very insecure about myself. And uh, I think that affected me really uh, a lot whenever I, growing, growing up out of high school. And uh, it was one of, my, one of the hardest tasks to kind of like overcome uh, graduating high school and, and be on my own. But my childhood was, it wasn't a bad childhood. We had, we had a, we had a, we had it good. My dad w was working full time, and my mom worked part time, and and she was a part time uh, housewife. Mm -hmm. So she would cook for us. So I got to experience experience like home cooked meals and and all that good stuff. But uh, as far as as far as just kind of like uh, having a you know like like a childhood that everybody else had, I don't think I had it had it just because I would see even my own cousins like having the the, the freedom that you most, never had. yeah that I never had so obviously I, I, I grew up uh, being a rebel uh, in my own thoughts but not really uh, showing them in, in front of people or my parents uh, I could never really like I can never really talk to my dad or like uh, get uh, like I can't imagine like I, I can I can't think of a time where I like I gave him a hug like that kind of like meant was meaningful to me uh, I think it was just very like passive aggressive most of the time just because he wasn't really like uh, touchy or, or feely uh, as not well. really affectionate Affect affectionate uh, with with my mom or me but then uh, whenever whenever I my little sister came uh, she was born uh, she was born when I was in ninth grade in high school so I was basically almost still an only child because uh, they kind of forgot about me, and I was I had to I had to grow up in high school, and I couldn't really go to my parents to like ask them for like advice about you know like the typical high school issues that people girls. run into yeah, yeah about stuff like that because they were too busy with my little sister, so I kind of also had to grow up on my own in high school. But when it when time when time came about you know having to ask if I could go out or if I could do this and this and that, my dad always shut it down because he wanted me just to study, study, study. And I wasn't an A student. I was I was like a B, uh, high you were C. Doing your best, like yeah, I was doing C. I was doing my best. But I again like all I all I can remember growing up is is my dad being super strict and me not being able to express myself fully. Uh, with with my dad and my mom was a little bit better but still I just I didn't have the practice of expressing myself with my family and that kind of affected me when I when I um, when I graduated but uh, as far as my childhood that's how that went so so how would you say your relationship with your parents was like with your sister like were they affectionate 
like more so with the her than they were with you? Like how did that make you feel? Uh, yeah, they were, my dad was more affectionate with my sister just because I think she was a girl and it was way different. It was not, it, there wasn't any, any macho, like kind of like, um, like he didn't know how to be affectionate towards yeah, like with, his with, son. Yeah, with me, but with my sister, since she was like a baby, uh, it, it almost came natural. And, um, and my mom as well. I mean, my mom, uh, she's very, she's very sweet and, and affectionate. So she didn't have, I didn't, I didn't have that issue with her, with me. But uh, as the, they kind of just, you know, started doing their own thing. And so basically, like I said, like, I was still like an only child, basically. But I was still taking care of my little sister as well and stuff like that. But uh, it didn't really eliminate, eliminate the, like, the issues that, uh, that you were feeling that I, I had with my, with my dad, especially before my sister. It was the same thing after my sister. Maybe, maybe a little bit even worse, just because I feel like he he kind of would have been a little bit stressed out just because of you know, kind of like having to provide for the baby and mm -hmm. and, and now an extra child in the, in the family. So when you say um, you were rebellious at some point, was it like to get their attention in some way or like in what ways were you rebellious when you were younger? Um, I was rebellious, not really. Uh, not really to get their attention because I, I couldn't really uh, grab. I think if I was rebellious, I was rebellious more towards my mom just because I didn't. She didn't. She didn't have. Any, she didn't have any fault uh, for like my bad attitude because of what my dad gave me, right? But I feel like she was the only one that could help me, kind of like make me feel better about myself because of my dad. And I would kind of be rebellious with her. And in a way, I kind of still regret uh, certain actions that I did towards my mom because I felt like I had like resentment towards her because she never really did anything. She never stood up for you. Like, yeah, she never... yeah, she never really stood up for me, and, and I think that's how I was rebellious. But I couldn't really be rebellious towards my dad because he would just shut me down, shut it down. Shut yeah. it down. But I was also very rebellious in high school, just uh, with other people, and and but it was more of like uh, like. I wouldn't really share it. I was more like rebellious in, in thoughts and I never really took action towards them. Uh, just because again, I was just very, I was very shy. I, I could barely like hold conversations with, you know, my, uh, my teammates or classmates or it was, I was very awkward and I'm so awkward now, but like it was, it was, it just translated from, from home to, to, you know, um, to adulthood school, and adulthood school. and stuff like that. So. So how would you say your relationship with your parents is like now, like today? Uh, it's way better. I, I mean, I, uh, I talk to my dad, but uh, I think I've been more affectionate with my dad now, and he's told me certain things that I, ne I never thought he'd tell me ever in, in my lifetime. Uh, like I think a couple of weeks ago, he sent me a, he sent me like one of those uh, picture quotes in uh, Spanish, like, uh, like had, had like a lot of meaning to it. Yeah. And I was like, and I showed it to my mom, and my mom was like. <laughs> Mom, even my mom was surprised, and she was like, "Wait, your dad sent you that?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah." And it was talking about something. I think about like, uh, I think the quotes. It was in Spanish. It said something like, "Maybe I never showed you uh, love or anything like that, but just know that, I, like deep inside, I do I do care for you, yeah. and, and I, I care for you what uh, what you do at the end of the day, kind of thing." And that kind of just threw me off in, in a way. Uh, I felt like I kind of like, um, you know, I want I got some respect from him in a way because I, I think after high school I um, after high school going into a community college I I started doing I, I got into college and I started doing my own thing and I, and I and I'm still living at home but I felt like I was already growing up and I, I felt like I wasn't going to be going through the same problems that I did in high school just because like, all right, cool. Like, you're an adult. Yeah, I'm an adult. I'm an adult now. Like, maybe he can see me more uh, mature and stuff like that. But uh, one of the reasons why I ran away from my from the house uh, months into starting my freshman year in, in community college was because he made it a big deal about, about me still not doing... Uh, me not going out uh, to this trip that I was supposed to go to Austin that weekend because I wasn't uh, meeting his, his expectations on something that had no like it had no meaning or like hadn't wasn't like, relevant at it, all. It was yeah, to go. it wasn't relevant and and that kind of just like it made me really upset and there had been there, were, there had been a couple of times where uh, I had ran away 
from uh, prior to yeah when I was in high school and I would run away with my cousin and uh, and then I I came back because my mom was just like yo like don't be dumb like come back you know so I did but then whenever whenever this issue was going on uh, I just I was mind blown because I was like I was thinking I was I had all these thoughts and, and those thoughts were like the rebellious thoughts like it was it was my rebellious self that I probably didn't do as much as my dad because I, I I felt like it would have been pointless but. I was thinking, I was like, I was like, I'm in, I'm in community college. I just got my first vehicle because I didn't, I, I didn't have a car in high school. Mm-hmm. I just got my first vehicle and I, I have a job now. I'm making money. The only thing is that's stopping me is that I'm living under the roof, and and because of that, he has a say over me still. And and he was, he was threatening me that I wasn't gonna go to Austin. He was gonna take my car away, and then I was gonna basically be in my room. And I was like, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go through that again after like four years in high school of going through that. And um, I remember like so perfectly that he just kind of like, he was baffled because like he, a- he asked me a question and I basically, I basically talked back to him and, I was, and he was like, are you not gonna speak up? And I, and I was just like, with a, with, a, with a knot in my throat and like very like, almost like teary because like, I, I couldn't say anything. And I was just, I was like, no, I don't have anything to say. So he literally told me, he's like, go to the backyard and stay there all night until I tell you to come. And I kind of thought it was ridiculous. But at that point, I already, I already knew I was going to, like, I was going to run away. You were set. That was it. I was like, uh, there's no, I'm not going to come back. So as soon as I go to my, through the backyard, I, I remember perfectly, I, I pet my dog and I kind of started crying because I, I just got really emotional and I just jumped the fence and then I started running and I didn't see him for, like, two years after that. Cause, really? Yeah. I, uh, I went to my aunt's. And um, she she took me in because she already she already knew everybody in my in my family yeah she, they already knew how my dad was so she was very uh, accepting uh, of like the issues that I was going through and my mom did not even like try to because um, she saw to, you know like, yeah she I, I think at that point my mom was like okay like this is kind of like ridiculous like uh, like I'm not gonna stop him anymore I'm not gonna tell him to come back and actually like I think three or four months later my mom actually left. Uh, left my dad as well, and I kind of, I, I kind of, I, I want to say that I had, uh, I had a motive uh, behind that. So uh, they're not together anymore, but they still talk because of my sister. Mm-hmm. But I, I took me two years to to not talk to my dad, and basically during those two years, I was just trying to prove my dad that I didn't need him saying, telling me what to do, and I could kind of like thrive without him, and. I started working at my first restaurant, uh, T-Bone Tom's in Kima, and I was going to I was going to community college, and I was basically my my motivation was to prove him, and every day like I didn't slack off or anything. I was like, but I didn't also I didn't know what I was doing because like it was something brand new, so I was getting to meet all these new people, but I was I was still awkward just because I hadn't not been able, I had not been around this many people without yeah. like without having like. My With parents, the experience yeah. of being around so many people, having the social, social experience. Yeah, social uh, experience. So, getting out of high school, like, the first two, three years, it was it was very awkward of me. Like, I, I couldn't really speak up, and I couldn't really uh, express myself. And the way that I that I tried expressing myself was, you know, by finding, finding things to do on my own time. And maybe with my cousins, well, because I was with my aunt. But, uh... Yeah, it took two years until I finally talked to them, and um, I talked to them, and we were kind of good. But then again, uh, there was still some tension. A lot, yeah, the two. tension and kind of like kind of resentment, and uh, I, I think we stopped talking for like we talked for a little bit, and then we talked we stopped talking for like an, another year, and at, around that time is when I went to Colorado, and it was something crazy that. In one day, I, I kind of like made up my mind. I was like, uh, "What am I doing with my life?" And I moved into my new, my first apartment in Colorado. But um, coming back from Colorado, that's when I started talking to him. And and again, we stopped talking for a little bit afterwards. So we've had a rocky like a rocky relationship, relationship afterwards, just because of the rebellious uh, mindset uh, that I had and, mm-hmm. and that I wanted to do things on my, my own way. And he wanted me to go to school, and I did go to school, and I was going to school, and I went to school for five years, but. I feel like I was just going to school just to make my mom and my dad happy. Yeah, it wasn't happy. for you at it all. It wasn't for it was me. Kind of... So at the same time, everything was kind of like, was... Uh, what were you doing? 
I was working and I was going to school, but I felt like the reason why I was going to school was for them, and I wasn't really paying attention. I was just going, I was just going to say that I was, and I felt like I, I wasted time, but at the same time, uh, everything kind of like planned out perfectly because this is where I'm at now, and because of it, I, I, you know, I went, I went to culinary school, and uh, I think we can. That's when you started photography. Yeah, I guess, you. I guess we can go into that a different question, but <laughs> yeah. So um. I mean, did your, like, dad ever, you know, like, was there ever a conversation when he was, like, you know, I was wrong, like, I shouldn't have been so hard on you, or was it just no. kind of, like, something that's been sweeped under the rug, but, yeah. like, you both know about it, but it's not touched Yeah, on. He, he's kind of said, it, he said it in a different way, but mm -hmm. not really accepted it, because my dad is very prideful, yeah. and that's the thing, uh, growing up, uh, I was, like, if you know if this floor is red it's red like i couldn't you yeah, can't argue so with him. him and if he's wrong he's not gonna say yeah. i'm wrong unless he unless it's like very obvious and he's like oh yeah i'm, I'm wrong but like in things like that he's prideful for he, he's never wrong so he never he's never said you know like hey like i'm sorry for being this way but he's in different ways uh kind of like apologized by being there for me mm -hmm. and um and then, uh, like, after a few years starting photography, I, I remember like, is like a, a really good memory. We went out to uh, we went out to eat. Well, well, basically, we went out to get some drinks. So we we're at a bar, and we we're just kind of he's just asking me questions like, oh, so like, how's this going? Like photography, like, uh, how are the shoes? And then he's giving me tips. It's like, oh, I think you should do like this, this, and that. Like he's very he was very into it. And for me, that was like a that was very like. Like memorable. it made you feel really good. Yeah, it made me feel good because at the same time I was like, okay, this is, this is all I wanted from him. I wanted to be accepted by what I was doing, and he he supported me. Uh, he was supporting me a hundred percent, and and at that point I was like, wow, like I got his his approval. I got like his his um, his support. Yeah. And, and to me that was that 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 motivated me even more. Like. To just like now, okay, now that I have his attention, now I have to get more. Work even harder. Uh, harder, harder. Uh, right now, he's uh, he's not he's not even in the states. He he was he was trying to fix his papers, and there was an issue with the lawyer and stuff like that. So he kind of they had to deport him to Mexico. So he's over there for like at least two years. So that's something another in a different topic as well that uh i had to go through last year especially with my sister now my sister's 11 years old and uh my sister like loves my dad and my dad obviously loves my sister so it's a very difficult thing to go through yeah family. especially um after uh, hurricane um harvey harvey he had to he had to renovate his whole house and then after renovating the house uh, find out that they had to take everything out of the house because they had to put it for rent just because he had to, you know, go to Mexico for a few years. And um, to me, that was, that, that was, uh, it caught me off guard just because I didn't, even though like he was there, I didn't see him as much as, as I wanted to. And just the idea of like, have, like knowing that he was at home, I it made me comfortable. But then out of nowhere, him not being anywhere in the in the radius that I'm at, it was just it was just, it caught like it was, it was just it, weird. And yeah, feeling. it was upsetting, and it kind of like made me want to like uh, go back and be able to spend more time with him while he was in uh, in in Texas. But as long as he's okay in Mexico, hopefully just nothing happens. But it just things change from like like one thing to another, and um, that's one thing I've learned, especially in the last few years that. You have to kind of like appreciate everything that's yeah. around you, and um, when it is, when it is, and and I like to do things um, now and not later uh, is, is what I do now. So, mm -hmm. so going into your culinary, um, I know you were doing that for a while, and that's mm -hmm. actually the reason like you accidentally stumbled upon yeah. photography, which is what you do now, which is your passion. Yes. So tell us a little bit of the transition. To where you decided you wanted to start culinary, like what even inspired you to do so in the first place, and how did you accidentally fall into the whole photog photography section of it? So I think I think when I first started my first job, like in 2000, uh, 2012, 2013, 
at T Bone Toms. Uh, I was a server, but I liked the idea of like the business uh, concept of, of a restaurant, of, of running a kitchen and, and a, the manager. And, and, and I didn't really have the idea of being a chef, but I had the idea of wanting to have my own restaurant uh, someday. Excuse me. And then, um, but the chef, the chef, uh, being a chef came later on after um, I had already been working as a server for uh, like four or five years. And I was like, okay, like, well, what's the next move? And that's how my mindset's always been. Like, okay, like I've been doing this for this long. What's the next move? Like, I'm not, I, I can't be comfortable. You're never really satisfied. No, like I, I have to, I have to go another level yeah. uh, over. So at the time I had met uh, this girl and that I started dating and it kind of went fast. Like I, 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 I started working at King's Beer Garden in Pearland and then um, I met her. So we started dating and we kind of like moved in together like after four months of knowing each other, which is really fast, but we worked, we worked together. We, yeah. were, we were hanging out together. We, were, we basically fell in love uh, like really Very quick quickly. and, and we moved in together. So basically like, I was like, okay, I have the love of my life. Like we have my own, own place. I was like, now I have to figure out what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I think that's what we all think about um, when we're young is like, what do I want to do? And sometimes we just do the things that other people want us to do. And, mm -hmm. and uh, being, uh, being a chef came from working at the restaurant. And I was like, okay, the only way, I want to know the back of the house concept of the restaurant. So the only way I can, I know, I can know that system is by being a chef and by be, being able to know how to cook or uh, learn like recipes and stuff like that. Cause uh, I don't know why, but that's like, that to me was a, a better way of going into it rather than going to school to be, uh, you know, a, a business, uh, a business major to be like a manager, right? Mm -hmm. I want, I, I wanted to go the other way because I'm you all, wanted to learn hands on, hands on, yeah. And I knew a lot of people that were going for just business, uh, a business major to be a, a manager, mm -hmm. but I wanted to do it a different way because I've always wanted, I've, I've always done things the opposite way because I don't like going, uh, through the same trail as other people. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, let me be a chef. So I I told I told my girlfriend my girlfriend at the time, I was like, you know what, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna go to culinary school. And she thought it was crazy. I was like, because uh, it was super random mm -hmm. and uh, and, she, and I was like, I remember like making calls to the school and like what did I have to do to get in and all that stuff and how much it was and uh, if I can get a loan or whatever. And I ended up going to the Arts Institute of Houston and I went there for a year. Um, while I was still working at King's Beer Garden. And around that time, we, me and her had a rocky, uh, we're starting to get rocky. A little distant. The, well, yeah, a little distant and, you know, like the typical relationship where like you argue about just the smallest, uh, smallest things. And I, I didn't show up to work one day because I didn't want to see her, which is so, so dumb. But I, I basically got fired from that job. So then I, I got another job at Papa Grill Steakhouse, which is on Westheimer, which is a way across like, town. yeah, way across town, but also like very like intense and like very popular and high end. And, and then uh, I started working there and then I, we, we got back together. We got our own place. So at this point we weren't seeing each other at all times. We were just, I was working very different she, opposite yeah schedules. and uh we were kind of like more free now but uh long story short uh she got me a camera uh for school because i was taking pictures of my of my, my plates because uh, at the end of the semester we had to sh uh, showcase our, our plates for the restaurants so that's how i got into having my own camera and it was a canon rebel so one I, re I still remember it it was a small camera and i thought i was like i thought i was like like big shit and you know yeah, stuff like, like that. Big shot, yeah, like... big shot and, and I was taking pictures of food but I never expected ever that I was gonna be taking pictures of, of people. And and I would occasionally take pictures of her and that was it. But like I, I did I didn't like it didn't occur to me in my head like or how to process it or like how to even like like tell you like all right sit there and like I'm gonna go here and take a picture of you. Like nothing. Like it was not even in my system. But one of the things that stick to me was we had a mutual, me and her had a mutual friend that had just started taking pictures of, of models. Mm -hmm. Cause that's when Instagram started like, you know, uh, getting popular for that. And she, I remember telling me, it's like, Hey, like you better not take pictures of girls like, like Daniel. She told you that? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, no, I was like, like never. no, never. I was like, I, and I'm very respectful. I was like, I would never do that to you. And in a way I felt like that, that was almost like betrayal. Right. Uh -huh. At the time. And I was like, no, never, that would never happen. Blah, blah. So 
months months go by uh we end up breaking up it was a bad relationship like a bad breakup um the what was the reason that caused the breakup well uh to be honest she i i caught her cheating on me and and that was that was that was to me it was like heartbreaking because I, I found out about it then and my reaction was was very just i i, just, I didn't know what to do and um the way I found out was I didn't walk into them, but I I, I walk I, I I was in the parking lot because I knew something fishy was going on, and they both walked out together, and and she said that she had been with her dad, and it wasn't her dad. It was it was a, it was a guy that me me and her knew. So whenever that happened, I uh, she left the, the apartment, and I I just went into the apartment and got all my stuff, and she found out that I I saw them, and uh, I grabbed my stuff, and I was like, you know what, like. I'm leaving. This is it. Yeah, this the is final. it. This is it. And the my most savage kind of like uh, move that I did was I had just paid the rent like a couple of days before that, and it was we both were splitting rent, and it was six hundred dollars for my part and six hundred dollars for her part. So if I left, I, I almost felt like I I paid for you the pay for, her for a month. Next month. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like I'm leaving. Oh, she's comfortable. So while she was dropping this guy off, uh, I locked the doors and I started grab, grabbing all my stuff. And I had remembered that her Amazon, uh, her debit card was linked to my Amazon account. So <laughs> I go on there, and at the time I had just bought a new body. It was a Nikon D7100, and I, but I, it had a kit lens. I didn't, I didn't have any like good lenses, so I ordered the lens, which was like six hundred dollars, and I bought it off her off her debit card. And I was like, okay, if I can't get my money back, I, I can at least yeah, like yeah, yeah, get myself something nice. Give, give me something nice. So I did that. And a week later, when I got to the lens, I just started hitting girls up. And because the reason why I did it was because she had told me to not do it. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm like, so you intentionally started to do it to kind of like yeah. be petty towards her. Yeah, I, w I wanted it to get her to get mad. Although, like, I don't, I don't think it can, it can relate, match what she did to me that I'm that I did yeah, to her. Yeah, yeah. But for me, that was like the only thing I can think of. And I started asking girls, like, yo, like. I don't. Ha I only have pictures of food, but if you give me a chance, I'll I'll make you look good. And yeah. I started throwing a bone o over the fence and start getting some, you know, start, start getting some uh, some yeses. Obviously, I got a bunch of no's, but I was very professional about it. And at the time, I was very unexperienced of, of how to ask or like or like what to do on one 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 because I was still breaking out of my shell as being be being, being comfortable, like yeah, and, and social. So. I, I still remember remember my first shoot and my cousin actually went with me and he was helping me out and me and him talk about it all the time how like I was like dude like, do you remember when I did that shoot I was like so like, yeah man I was like it was insane because like now I, I see the progress of it but from what something that came from being you know uh, kind of like to get, get her back uh, is something that you accidentally like fell stumble upon yeah. and that only happened because I was in culinary school and if I had never gone to school Maybe I'm, maybe I, I might be in death now because of culinary school, but at least I found what I, what I enjoy doing now, and, and um, that's how I stumble. That's how culinary and photography cross paths, and um, I, still, I still like culinary, and I still imagine myself going back to it and having my own restaurant, and, um, but that's like years later. But whenever I found photography, I... I um, I was still working at Papa Bro Steakhouse, and I was still going to school. So um, I did that for ten months. I was I was shooting people like four or five times a week, and then I was working at the restaurant forty hours a week, and I was still going to school. So there was days where I wouldn't even sleep, where like forty eight hours, I almost felt like it was a, it was one day, mm -hmm. and because I, I I would catch myself doing the same thing the next day, I'm like, wow, I, I felt like I just did this like like a couple of hours ago yeah. and I'm like cleaning I'm cleaning the oven in, in, in the kitchen uh, at the restaurant and I'm like wow like and I'm like delusional and I did that for 10 months straight because I was like I love both of these but I just yeah. don't, I just don't know what to pick I didn't know and initially what I was doing at Papa Bro Steakhouse I was there to be a chef manager but I had to work my way up so so what made you choose photography like so, at what moment so uh, around like uh, around 10 months in, um, I had gotten approached by the GM. It was like, hey, like, I see you're, like, you're improving. You're almost done with school. 
It's like, do you want to start the management program? It's two months. It's two months to finish it, and and at the time, I I was just barely getting noticed on Instagram. People were noticing me in public, and people were wanting to take pictures. And I was starting up. I was starting to give out my rates for uh, for my photography, and it, and it started at fifty dollars an hour, which is nothing now. But um, I was like, wow. Like you were seeing the, the process with yeah. your photography and you were handed this opportunity that you had been working for yeah. so long. Yeah, exactly. And you said... Well, I I told... I was honest with them. I was like, wow. I wasn't really honest with them right then and there, but I told them, like, can you give me a day to mm-hmm. think about this? And even the GM was like, oh, okay. Like, he, like you've he, been working really hard for yeah, this. Yeah, he, he, even him was like, wow, like, I thought you would have said yes, like, right away. Yeah. And I was like... I thought about it, and what I had thought, like, what went through my head was, like, okay, like, Christian, like, you've been busting your ass off at this restaurant for this long, and I was like, is this something you want now? And if that was me, like, to, like before photography, I would have taken it, but what I had noticed was, like, if I accept this, I'm going to start getting paid salary, I'm going to start working 12-hour shifts, and I'm going to be comfortable, I'm going find, to find myself a new apartment, get myself a new car, because I'm making all this good money, safe money yeah. and I'm gonna forget about photography because I'm too tired for it and it was gonna be one of those things I was like oh I remember when I used to do that because there had been a lot of things before that that I would try because I was always on the Doing lookout something new. yeah I was always on the lookout of wanting to perfect something or make something big and and this time I didn't want to I didn't want photography to just get away so so I pursue. declined it. I declined the, the, the I declined offer. the offer, and even the chefs were like, kind of like, you like, know, what's su- wrong with surprised. You? <laughs> yeah, and I think I, I think they even uh, offered me like a raise like right away, and I was like, damn, it's like I don't know. I was like, and one thing I, like I remember the most was like I don't want I don't want to think what if uh, you know I was like what would have happened if if I if if I. If, if I did it if I did photography if I proceeded if I went to do culinary diet and they it was I I declined it and then after that they stopped moving me around and because they saw that I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna be a chef manager there anymore so after like two weeks I just I call myself just like in rotation of just going to, into work and just basically getting paid to, to, as an, any other employer that was yeah. there so at that point I was like okay Christian is like you declined this. Now you have to do something about it, mm-hmm. and and like you have to pursue. I have to like the you are, reason why you declined. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't know how to. I, I didn't know what exactly I could do. Like there was no uh, outline to like. Oh yeah, you have to do this uh, to uh, first step. To, uh, for uh, full time photography, you have to do this or this and that. No, nothing. So, and at the time, um, obviously, like you didn't know about the community. Like you didn't have Mm-mm. many photographer friends that were no. at a level where you wanted to be. So you didn't really have anybody giving you that guidance. Yeah, well, I, I yeah, there was no guidance, but I did, I, I did have like idols at the time because okay. I had already been shooting for like uh, ten months, and I had idols that I, I looked up to. Like, oh wow, like I love their photography. But part of my, you know, like one of my traits that I have from my dad is like I'm very very prideful and, and mm-hmm. I don't like asking okay. for favors or I don't, I don't like asking like how somebody does it because I'm like okay they work hard for it like I have to figure it out on my own you want to be self-made yeah self-made so I was still like well how do I do this and I didn't know how but at the time whenever I was having like all these thoughts uh, one one of the guys that was following me on Instagram messaged me he's like hey he's like bro he's like, I love your I love your I love your page uh, nice photos and I'm like, oh thanks man and and I click on his profile and he had nothing but food photography and mm-hmm. I was like and at the time I was like I want to I kind of want to get into food photography first and then portraits because I, I had the background of culinary and I felt like I could do it and and so I asked him I was like hey man I was like I was like I see you shoot for Uber Eats so I was like how do you do that he's like well I'm actually the I run I run I run this company that shoots for Uber Eats so I was like I was like no way I was like are y'all hiring he's like we actually are so long story short he interviewed me and I got the job and and when I got that I was like okay this is my call like this is where I make the transition and I was like I don't know how long I'm going to be shooting for Uber Eats or like what the hell is going to happen but, but you need to take this opportunity yeah I was like so I took it and I put my two weeks in at the restaurant so for two weeks I was like shooting food during the day and I was working at the restaurant at night so by the time that my last day at the restaurant came I actually did not show up 
because I, I was like very, something very irresponsible, but it was something, it was more of a personal choice. And I didn't show up because I wanted to burn the bridge with me being at the restaurant. Like, I was like, if I'm going to chase after full-time photography, I don't want to be able, have, I don't want to have a door open for me if I fail at, the, at it. Like, if I'm not making enough money, I can just go back to working at the restaurant. I was like, no, I, like, I need to. Like, you just want to completely close yeah, I wanna that Yeah, I, I was, I was like, I need to cut this off completely because I only get motivated by, by, by pressure like that, mm -hmm. you know? And... I didn't show up the last day, and I remember I was doing a photo shoot, and I, I still remember who it was. The, the GM calls me, he's like, hey, I was like, are you going to come in? And I was like, oh, man, no. you know, I was just like, no, I can't. I'm actually doing a photo shoot, and I, did, I, I, I didn't. So you, I, like, sabotaged yourself, I sabotaged, Yeah, I sabotaged that, and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, for now, I'm not going to come back to work at a restaurant for, for a good while, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what kind of motivated me, and uh, that's how I got into full-time photography. And I started shooting food, and then I was also shooting portraits on the side as well. So, so to kind of summarize, for someone who wants to start pursuing photography, like what are some steps that you learned along the way that you can advise to them? Uh, that want to start photography? Or, yeah. Or full-time? Well, full-time photography. Full like do, doing what Christian Pena does. Oh, okay. Um, Number one thing I always say is persistent, persistency, like or, or and consistency, consistency, and being persistent as well. Uh, people think that you can just, you know, maybe do one photo shoot and then you're set, right? Or if you can just do one really good shoot, you, you're gonna get known by by other people, you know. Uh, so it's basically just just working, 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 and. Um, posting every day or like even just shooting every day because if you're shooting every day you're also making you practice have more content yeah practicing you're, you're making practice networking networking as well and one thing I say a, a lot to people is like like you don't know who you're gonna cross yourself uh, uh, in front of next and that might be like your next op big opportunity like you literally have to trip yourself over somebody so they can kind of see you because if you're just hiding behind a rock Nobody's gonna know about your work. Nobody's gonna know who you are. Nobody's gonna know what you do. So being persistent and uh, and, and being consistent as well, and then also, uh, you know, um, meeting a lot of new people. And the other thing is um, not being able, not being afraid of trying new things. Taking risks. Yeah, taking risks. So my first year in photography, like. I like I think as any business, uh, well, full time photography, I didn't make as much money as I'm making now. Mm -hmm. And I think any business is like, it's like you're not, you don't get rewarded uh, with money the first year. You, you have to invest your time and work to kind of to kind of come back the second year and start making money. And the first year was, it was I think for anybody is always going to be the year like it's either going to break you or make you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, a lot of people quit the first year and and then they don't come back because they don't see they don't see any income or they don't see improvement but they just don't see they don't they don't see it and there's a lot of occasions where like I want I wanted to give up but what kept motivating me was all the people that I was meeting and mm -hmm. it was that, that was a, the, like the biggest reward was um, getting to connect with these people but what I got out of it was also just getting to express myself and finally being able to uh, be social with people um, and also also knowing how to talk to people and gaining that confidence that I never had before and um, and there was times where like I I was backed up with 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 payments that I can't even pay uh, and my car got repo twice and things that things that I, I things that would have made somebody else be like quit give yeah up. quit like you know what I'm gonna get a job now because I, I need this money I need to secure money mm -hmm. and so I think the first year is always gonna be the hardest so going to full time all you all like, what I recommend is just basically just giving it like your 100% and just looking for jobs and and then creating content and just posting 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 and then social media right now is your is your is a free tool like mm -hmm. just use it to to your advantage and um, and just learn from it as well, um, and and basically, yeah, yeah. That's it. yeah. So through your uh, photography career, what are some obstacles that you had to face that you genuinely didn't think you were gonna overcome, 
um, but did or just kind of made you feel like this is it like I don't want to do this anymore like let's um, just quit altogether I think things that I never thought I'd, I'd come across or probably things that I never I never imagined in the first place because like I, I, I'm so, I still think about it today is like photography is like a whole different world and it's crazy to think that before photography I was doing something else that photography was still going on but I never like I never thought about it you know it's like mm -hmm. it's like I'm into like a different universe like you're in this universe and you, you can kind of like relate as well like it, you've done modeling before and uh, it's like you meet these people that are in the same the same group but like out of that like you, you don't you never imagined that this existed yeah and I think like that there's a lot of other things that a lot of professions that are like that too but things that come with is, is more of the artist the artist mind and how artists work and how people can also be very fishy at times because they and for their own convenience they want to take advantage of, of you and stuff like that so uh, one of the biggest obstacles is like figuring out who is is doing for genuine reasons or like yeah. who's or using you using you and I've ran into a lot of people where like they, they've screwed, screwed me over and 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 I'm just like well like I'm just kind of like I'm like what the hell like what why would you do something like that and it's just it comes with it you meet a lot more people but you meet a lot of good people but then you meet a lot of bad people mm -hmm. and there's also a lot of a, there's a lot of hate that I never expected you know like in high school, like I was, I wasn't, you know, nobody really hated me because I wasn't. Nobody was cared about me, you know. Like mm -hmm. I was, I was just, I was shy and all that stuff. So like coming into photography and then being, being like, so like attacking all the time, just shooting, 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 and then just kind of like blowing up the page. It, it comes with it that pe more people are going to see you. Yeah, and, and then the more hate. The more hate, and there's a lot of love, but then there's a lot of hate. And there's things that people don't understand that makes you question like, am I, well, is it me or is it, or is it them? You mm -hmm. know, uh, I remember like whenever I did um, a fundraiser for the Hurricane Harvey, it was me and three other people. And basically this video was controversial because we made a video that was explaining, it's like, okay, like we're out here in Dallas, we can't go back home. And for every comment that this video gets, we'll donate a dollar to to uh, JJ Watts Foundation and obviously there's people I think people are, are just you know make they always want to complain about something but people are starting to say it's like, oh it's, it sucks that you have to use this strategy in order to get like a uh, cloud or like popularity over social media and it was like I never thought about it that way but it was more it was just more to get traction and, and attention over a, cost. over a cost so we can raise money and we weren't telling them to like go, oh, go comment and follow all our pages. No, it was just basically just comment, comment yeah. anything. And it was just more to like get, spread start, awareness. Spread awareness. And so that was the first thing. So then while we were shooting, as uh, while we started doing these shoots, because we, basically what we we're going to be doing, we we're going to be shooting, we we're going to be going to San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, and just doing shoots and getting donations mm -hmm. for for it. You know, we weren't we weren't taking we weren't taking any money for us, but we were using our own gas money and and. and we were uh, all coming out of pocket. All out of pocket, and we raised uh, thirty-five hundred uh, dollars in two days, which was crazy. Because I think we, yeah, we had a, a a GoFundMe page, and people were donating on there, and then we were also getting money from our shoots. And there was people that were making memes out uh, out of me because they were saying that I was, were you gonna steal that money? Mm -hmm. But it was mainly me. It. It, yeah, it wasn't even the other guys I was with. It was just targeted to me and I remember being so tired and I was like re like really like I'm we're trying to do something good here and then people will, like have the audacity or like they still wanted to hate mm -hmm. you know and that to me was very very new to me because I was like I was like I like I was getting unmotivated and I, I just didn't I almost gave up on the whole the whole thing I was like, you know what guys like let's not even do this like let's not even like keep going but the guys I was with, they're like, you know what, like, like we know what you mean, like you, your intentions are. Yeah. So I was like, Let's I was like, yeah, this. like if anything, just we'll 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 tell everybody like what the real deal is and stuff like that. So we finished that, but the, it was it was surprising how much hate there was, and and that's just one example. Like, there's always people that want to hate and just kind of like, and I think what it is is mainly that they're not confident on the 
on themselves mm-hmm. that they want to bring other people down yeah. and we see that on, on social media a lot and I think a lot of people are afraid of just being themselves because they're gonna get hate on or or you know judged yeah and I think the one thing that I've been able to learn is just not like to just ignore it altogether ignore it altogether and um, so why do you think it was just you because there was other photographers that were involved too but um, I think for a while there, you're a little bit controversial. Um, do you think that played a part onto why it was just Christian Pena? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, that had to do as well because I, like, me being uh, as an influencer, it just became because I was more of like, a confident on, on what I was doing, you know? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, that goes back to, like, saying like, what I was telling you is, like, people that don't have confidence, they they bash on people that do have confidence, you know? And sometimes that confidence can get uh, mistaken for arrogance. And uh, I personally don't think I- I'm like that, but there's people that have said it, but those are the people that are insecure about themselves. And um, I think, you know, like before, whenever around that time that it happened, I think it was two years ago, like two and a half years ago, I was, I would, I would talk back to people, like people that were calling me out and like you would respond to negative comments and just kind of yeah or like fire. yeah and then i'll fire back but i don't do that anymore uh but i think it was one of those things is like it was a learning curve that i had to kind of like change uh i mean i don't regret firing back mm-hmm. at people because they were firing at me first but it's something i wouldn't do anymore but yeah i think it, it came with like the growth of it that people were seeing that uh, people we're also like not scared to say, uh, say what they felt, mm-hmm. and uh, I can't get mad at that. Like if somebody thinks uh, has, opinion, has an opinion, never. you know, it's 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 their own say, and uh, I have opinions too. Like mm-hmm. that's why we're that's why we should be all be able to like express, express our yeah. express ourselves. But you just, I just had to learn how to handle it, yeah. and sometimes it would make me want to quit. I was like, you know, I was like, I don't think this is worth it, and I th- and and. And other days, it would just motivate me even more to like, to just, all right, you know what? Like, like, yeah. And I remember one time, and this is one of the talks that I had with my dad was, because I would tell him about it, and and he was like, well, I think there's a saying in Spanish is like, if the dogs, if the dogs are barking, is because you're making noise. Mm -hmm. So, so like that, that kind of like motivated me even more. I was like, okay, that's true. You know, like. Maybe like maybe I shouldn't stop. I should just keep going. Maybe I should just correct a couple of things and mm-hmm. and still like and still stand for what like what I what I like you know what I feel mm-hmm. for. Uh, but yeah, it's I don't I don't have that much controversy on how, but just because I I don't post that much. But I think it yeah. came it came with like posting my posting stories a lot and not being afraid of what people thought. Yeah, and that that kind of like. I kind of like also kind of piss people off. Yeah, in a way, but I was never I was never a dick to anybody. It was just more it was just more like I was like it was more of like a of a speech is like know your worth kind of kind mm-hmm. of thing, you know. So other than the Harvey controversy, um, what other controversies like have you had to face with? Um, so recently there was a photographer, or maybe like like five six months ago. There's a photographer that got bashed on because he was being inappropriate with a model, mm-hmm. and that model basically, you know, called him out, and he got he disappeared like in a day because like it, it went viral on Twitter and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure you already know who I'm talking about. And uh, but I was I was with this person for like a year and a half, and basically I I, I want to say I like to say that I allowed him to 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 be with me in the beginning because I I was very picky and I think that's where the whole like confidence and arrogance thing comes comes into place because I wouldn't let just anybody hang out with me but it was more of just creating a value for for my brand for myself because mm-hmm. there's people there's photographers that that just all shoot together and shoot for fun right and those people won't get take, taken seriously as much as people that are more exclusive you know like oh if you never if you don't see that person shooting with these people then you're always wondering like okay what are they doing are they are they're probably doing something better kind of thing they're perfecting their art or you know they're just doing shoots for for pay so that's that was that was my biggest thing so whenever i let this person uh work with me uh he um he did a good job as far as like what he wanted to do with me he wanted to make videos and stuff like that so he made videos for me so i in a way i'm i'm 
I made a best friend, and I and I we we stuck around together for like a year and a half. But the thing about this guy was he's, he was he was different. He was more interesting. He was he he would test things that it was. I found it found it very interesting. But it got to a point where he was being inappropriate while I was with him. That I had had to separate Towards myself. The models. Yeah, that I had to separate myself, and I separated myself like from him like six months before the, this whole this whole breakout mm -hmm. thing came out. But as people, as he was getting bashed on, I was getting included into it because, because you were with him. I was with him, and and I had a. To me, I had I had I had to like take action just because like at this point, like I'm already two years, two and a half years into or two almost three years of doing full time photography. Like I can't have my name out there. Yeah. Being, uh, you know, being told things you're that are taking care of you like yeah your own brand, your my name. brand and I'm like now people like are again coming out of the bushes because uh this whole uh this whole thing with that person happened and they were trying to throw rocks at me too and I and I had to make it clear I was like yo I was like I haven't I haven't talked to this guy in the longest time like the reason why I'm not talking to him because of that you know and I got a couple of, I got a couple of, uh reactions where the, the girls were like well, if you knew this guy was like this, like, why didn't you warn all of us? Yeah, like, why and, didn't you say something? And in that, and I, and that makes sense. But at the same time, is like, it's not my place to throw somebody under the bus, especially if, like, you know, uh, it's things that like a girl can kind of avoid as well. Because I feel like we're all, we're all, we can all like say uh, no and stuff like that, and we can take action. But I didn't, I didn't want to throw somebody under the bus, and. And people were getting mad about it, and uh, you just wanted to remove yourself from the situation altogether. Yeah, that's essentially what you did. And then, yeah, so that that was one of them. And then I think a little bit after that, um, I had this one photographer that had had always like bring my name up towards like models he would work with, and and it was just a bunch of lies. He would tell him that I, you know, I was doing inappropriate things with the, uh, with the model, and the reason why I found these things out was because. My my friends would tell me about it because they would happen to shoot with them and they wouldn't say anything. They were just gonna hear him out and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I had a and different occasions I had to you know put it to a stop and talk to these guys like yo, I was like you're like you're messing you're messing up my names. Like I don't know why you keep wanting to talk about him bad about me because in his defense I was talking bad about him and I don't talk bad about people. I'm I'm, I'm open minded. Uh, if I do say something about somebody, it's because it's very it's probably like. Someone needs to hear it, but I, I'm not gonna gossip with you. And if you bring up a photographer, I'm not gonna add to it. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna ask you, like, oh, so why? Like, I'm always, I'm, I'm always like just asking, but I never add. And I had to clear it out with the guy. Now we're good, but um, I was letting it, I was letting it slide several times, but it kept coming up, and I was like, like, I don't want, I don't want my money being messed up mm -hmm. because my name's being out there. Like, you're just messing up my money, kind of thing, and. So because you were hanging around with this person that was this way, yeah, and people were seeing from the outside that you were along with this guy, yeah, it put a stain, yeah, on your brand, yeah. and that's something that you still have to go through. And I still, and to this day, I still get it maybe like from one or two people, and I'm just like, and I haven't talked to him even since then. But I'm like, damn, like, damn, if I could like talk really to you, yeah, if I, if I, if I could talk to you, like, and tell you like what, like what mess you're still putting me through, like. I was like, I would tell you, but I, I don't even want to have contact with the person, and um, and I just kind of like, I just, basically the only way of like, kind of getting over it is like, I just have to continue putting my own good work, and hopefully with the words of like other people, they can just kind of like, you know, cover it up and stuff like that, but uh, yeah. So. so, I know you did cross country, like yeah. you have been running you know, that's just a sport that you've been doing yeah. while growing up. Uh -huh. And then it was cross country, and then you went to um, culinary, uh -huh. did the whole cooking, chef and everything, mm -hmm. and then you transitioned into photography. Mm -hmm. So essentially there's a pattern of you always kind of switching up, always doing something different. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you feel you're gonna switch into next? Anything you wanna pursue? Anything you've been like thinking about? Um, or is photography like it? Photography is pretty much it right now. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say that I'm going to be doing photography for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. but I know that photography is going to open another door for me. And uh, I like to think uh, that a short-term goal now in 2019 
is actually better than a long-term goal because just how the world is changing uh, so quickly that people that are so focused on, on long-term goals, uh, by the time to the, they get to that goal, it's irrelevant whatever they're trying to yeah. chase. And examples is not, I'm not bashing on people that go to school, but like let's say that you go to school and you go for four years and, and you go for something that you like, but then at the end of the, the four years, you don't even like it anymore. And now you just spend all this money and, and the job that you're working at, you don't even want to do it anymore. Now you want to do a different job. It's like, it, it runs into that pattern. And more of, sh more of a short-term goal is uh, find something that you can just knock off the list, uh, goal after goal, mm -hmm. and then expect yourself going like, going to something better and that's what i that's why how i see photography is like right now I'm, I'm meeting all these people i'm making money and um photography might take me into a different type of art because i think that's behind me it's, it's just art uh and i don't think i'm gonna be doing it for the rest of my life but i think it, it will take me to the, to the next big thing and right now some of my short-term goals are basically just uh, to be able to travel and be able to shoot and not have to edit because I think editing is one of my uh, one of my weaknesses because I, I don't like I don't like sitting on the computer yeah. I like I like more the connection of like having to like shoot with the person and getting to know them and what I, what I want to do is just shoot and then have a team where they edit it and they they handle all of, all of that kind of stuff but also the other thing that I want, I'm getting into is more food photography and, and creating like a, a media agency and just doing that starting it but then having a group of photographers that that take that take uh, take care of it so it's just planting little seeds here and there that have to do with photography and then maybe down in the future uh it, it comes into something bigger yeah so. so i know you're saying you set like little goals that mm -hmm. turn into medium goals mm -hmm. that turn into bigger goals mm -hmm. um and that's like kind of where your mindset's at but like where do you see yourself five years from now um uh, Five years from now, maybe like what what I can think of right now is and it could be business, personal life, settle down. Well, the with first children. thing <laughs> the first thing I can think of right now is having a kid and maybe being married by then already. Maybe yeah, <laughs> you're like I, think I so. prefer the kid, yeah. maybe the wife. Yeah, well, a kid for sure because my mom's already bugging me about having a kid. But <laughs> uh, I don't like maybe being married as well or just being a serious, very serious relationship, mm -hmm. but. I told myself when I was like 19, 20 that I wanted a kid when I was 25. I'm 25 now and I don't see it happening now, but I don't want it to go over 30, 30 yeah. years, right? So that's one of them. The other thing is being able to make residual money with different things that, I, that I've already started, starting now that I don't have to do later, you know? Mm -hmm. And just be able to, to, uh, to travel and, and, and be one-on-one -on -one with people because I think that's one of my favorite things is just getting to talk to people, getting to meet people. And um, so I don't, I don't, as much as an introvert I am, I, I see myself connecting with a lot of people one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna be doing in five years if it's photography, but I just know the idea of what it is gonna be. And it's gonna be more of just being personable, personal uh, with somebody. And I don't know if that's gonna include a camera or not, or if it's gonna include culinary. I, I, honestly, I don't know, but uh, I know what the idea of what my life I want it, want it, yeah. want it to be. But so right now you're just kind of more focused on your personal life. Yeah. Like in five years you kind of see your personal life more Yeah. and, and then and whatever then else happens. Everything goes surrounded by that because mm -hmm. right now I'm, I get, you know, I, I probably work like 80 hours a week that doesn't feel like it just because I'm doing what I love. Mm -hmm. uh, I might not, I don't want to be doing that in five years from now. I want to be working like a quarter of that and be making more money, uh, be making more money than I am now. Mm -hmm. So I, that's my goal is to like figure out what that's gonna be. Maybe it's gonna be photography or maybe it's gonna be around photography, maybe giving lessons and stuff like that or, or culinary or something that's in the media sense that I'm still meeting people just cause the world, I, I can't even imagine how the, the world's gonna be in five years from now, uh, how social media is gonna be or just, you know, just that itself, so. So your parents, I know you said they're really hardworking, they're really traditional mm -hmm. as being like Mexican parents, yeah. I for one yeah. can relate. Yeah. Um, what do they say now, like over your success, like over your hard work, like uh, over the name that you have made for yourself? My my mom is is very happy for me. Like she, she there's still a couple of things now that she doesn't understand, 
but she has come a long way from when I first started mm-hmm. where like she was kind of like clueless and she was more questioning me like can you really make money of photography mm-hmm. and because like that doesn't come from Mexican culture like it's not safe it's not secure you anything need the education yeah you need the degree, exactly you need exactly the nine to five job but along the way I've been able to show my mom and she's seen it in person where like people come up to me and they they know me and she's just kind of like baffled about it so she has trusted me along the way and now she she enjoys my my artwork and she also enjoys my journey and and she's just kind of mind blown how much I travel now and she's like oh my god like I barely see you that's and, crazy and so she's she's very comfortable now with what I'm doing and uh and she how she, would you say your dad my dad is also the same uh if I were to say my mom was 100 percent I think my dad's like at 80 percent he's still you know still <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. he's being like you know prideful a little bit but he understands a little bit more actually like yesterday I think he commented on one of my videos which he never comments on he's like let me know if you need help with the system yeah, because yeah, I was yeah. shooting a, it was a video of a but hot the girl support is there yeah like... the, yeah he, he now understands it and he, even I'll hear sometimes him talking to other people about my work and he'll even like share like you know videos about photography with me so it's there and it's, it's something that I I worked very hard for that I didn't think it was gonna happen yeah. uh, sooner uh, than later but yeah. Uh, yeah so they're very supportive well, that's good. I'm really yeah. happy to hear that. And thank you for answering our questions. Yeah. Now we're going to move over to okay. the fan questions. See what the people got to ask. Um, All right. right. Okay, guys. Now, welcome back to the fan question segment of the show. So the first question on Instagram is by my underscore ward. What made you choose photography? And I think we went into this. Yeah, we kind of went into it. I, uh, I basically fell into it because I already had a camera for, for culinary. And, uh, but basically what, I, what made me fall into it was the whole, you know, Instagram kind of like popularity that I was, the rise that I was enjoying, yeah. like the high of it. And that's what made me stay for it. So, yeah. So Mendoza.photo asked, what's your go-to lens? My go-to lens is my 56 1.2, which is for Fujifilm, and that converts to an 85 1.2, which is uh, very uptight if you're in a, cl- in a very small room, but it, uh, if you know how to use it, you can shoot inside and outside, but uh, it creates a lot of like details and bokeh in the background. So. so Lucas G Photos asks, how do you get to where you are in your career? I want to do what you do. I think we covered this a little bit as well. Consistency and not being able, like, not being able to, not being afraid of failing. I think the biggest thing as, as to like, you know, going, uh, going for it every day is, if you have an idea or you have an idea of wanting to be successful at something, you have to think of it. Uh, you have to you have to imagine yourself failing, yeah, and being okay with failing. You have to be willing to take rejection. Yeah, you have to be you have to like put yourself if you were to fail at uh, whatever you want to do, and be okay with that and being able to feel comfortable with that, and then go a- go after it, wanting to succeed because now if you fail at it, at least you can kind of get up and, yeah. and shake it off and then go after it. So I think. You just kind of like have to go after it and go ahead for go go ahead first. Uh, just dive uh, completely fear. right in. Yeah. So Stacy Crystal asks, "Have you ever had to work with an insecure woman? If so, how did you deal with it?" Damn. Yes, I have. <laughs> uh, I think I've had to work with a lot of them, but the one that I remember the most was actually when I first started photography. I think it was like five months in, and you would imagine that this kind of like would make me quit photography because. I remember, I remember driving all the way to Austin for this, and it was uh, it was a long drive. It was like six in the morning because I think I started driving like at four or three in the morning. And this girl, I felt like she had not slept the night before too, and I was. She was so nervous. Yeah, she was nervous, but I, I think it was her first photo shoot too. And the only reason I went over there, and it was a collab, it wasn't even a pay, I think it was a pay shoot, but she had a cool house, and I was like, okay, like I'll I'll totally go over there because she was she was kind of cute too, and and. Uh, I was shooting her, and even like the, the first five shots, because I'm I'm always I'm always uh, used to like showing the images to, to the model. Mm-hmm. Uh, she would look at them, and she'd be like, and no. she was kind of like spazzy too. She'd be like, no, no, like no, like let's <laughs> try again. And then I would like, okay, let's shoot, blah 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 blah, and then again, 
it's like fix her hair. Like, no, no, I just, I don't like it. And then I was just very, like, I was very, uh, I was feeling insecure about myself because, like, maybe I'm doing a bad yeah, job. Yeah. But then she started telling me, she's like, no, it's not you, it's me. So uh, one of the things I, I think that was a, a bad shoot, but in a way it also made me learn a lot because now I was. Now you know how to guide the models. Kind that of too. And I, and I think I knew how to guide then, but I think it was more of, like, being able to take the rejection or like kind of like the bash and still like kind of like work with it work with it and then just have a face of like profession and be like okay no we got it like let's let's keep going with it but it inside of me it was it was dreadful like i was just like we basically didn't get any good shots that day but it was <laughs> i feel insecure about my work and she was very insecure about her looks and stuff like that but basically if you ever get people like that just keep shooting uh, and like kind of like sm small and wave kind of thing, just like keep. You're bound keep... to get one good one, uh -oh. <laughs> one good photo. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. I thought you were talking about question. I was like, what is no, it? No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's just more positivity. If you if you have a bad shoot, just keep going with it. Don't don't let it take you down. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Is there anything you want to tell your supporters? Uh, whoever's watching this, thanks for watching this whole uh, segment, and, and I want to say thank you uh, to Melissa and the show and the crew. Um, I do want to say is that um, if you if you have any like any doubt about like if 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 it's photography or anything else that will like make you happy, still go after it. And you know if you fail, it's like I say now it's like better saying oh well than what if. You know you don't want to live your life imagining what could have happened if you actually maybe gave it a little bit of a try, at least a little bit, you know? Because if you fail, you can always go back to what you were gonna do uh, in the first place, you know? But if you don't, that, that, little, that little idea in your head will kind of like bother you for the rest of your life. And um, yeah, just, just don't be afraid to, to fail. So. Yeah. All right, Christian, thank you so much for being here. And thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to follow us on our social media platforms, as well as like this video and comment down below anybody else you guys would like to see next on Behind the Likes TV. Thank you, guys.